Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and TheSeedsOfLiberty.com and TheConsciousResistance.com. So today we have Connor Boyack um, coming in from Utah, right? Yep. Correct. Uh, Utah, and um, his websites are TuttleTwins.com, uh, the uh, Tuttle Twins Children's Book Series, and uh, FeardomBook.com, um, his uh, book on uh, politics and how fe fear you know, is the foundation for, for politics. Uh, you can find both of those um, through the landing page about dot me slash c boyack you can you can find both those links um he's also the president and founder of libertas institute um and you can find um the uh the book both both books the children's books as, as well as feardom on facebook and and twitter are both of those on twitter as well yep yeah oh, okay yep. so you can find those there um so we're gonna be talking about his um upcoming well actually the book three already came out um mm -hmm. creature from jekyll island um, about uh, the Federal Reserve and uh, the history of money, a little monetary system, um, I, um, and and then a book four, which is going to come out um, called Food Truck Fiasco, um, which is about the politics and regulations, and, how, and basically about entrepreneurship, right, and, and about yeah. how how regulations yeah. stifle um, uh, productivity for the uh, the small businessman. Um, so uh, so yeah, uh, Connor, thanks a lot for coming back on the show. I really appreciate thanks. it. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate being here with you. Yeah, yeah, we talked about your first two books last time, and I love uh, I love what you're doing. So I really want to help you spread it um, to as many people as I can, uh, because I love these books. I got all three of them so far, and I'm waiting for the fourth one. <laughs> I think I'm more excited than my son. Eagerly. <laughs> I'm more excited than my son. <laughs> yeah, he's five, so he doesn't really understand. I guess so much. Right. I mean, it's more the just pictures. getting into it. Yeah, yeah, it's more the pictures for him. You know, that's where they're at. But it's just having these books around the house, you know, for them to see and pick up. I think that's you know, an immense value in itself, right? What's funny is when we first started this, the thinking was that we would uh, create books that teach libertarian and and, um, and capitalist type principles to the children of people who have read the original book. So our first book was based on the law by Bastiat. So the thought was, well, all these people have read the law. They're going to get this for their kids. And and that's definitely been true. What's been interesting is, is uh, a larger constituency or a larger group of readers is really like homeschool moms um, and others who just have never read the book individually so the parents are getting excited and educated along the way um, and it's kind of a non-threatening way right like it's hard to give a like one of these like books written 200 years ago to someone it's it's written in English that doesn't really sound that good it's kind of harder to digest but when you give them a picture book that they can sit down and read with their eight-year-old it's very non-threatening it's it's very simplistic you just get to kind of the core principles so we've had a lot of good uh, parents such as yourself I mean you're well versed in these concepts already but a lot of parents who are very new to this stuff that they're like, hey, I really like this. This really kind of, you know, helps me think about things in a different way or whatever. So it's been fun to see adults getting educated too, along with just the kids. That was un unexpected and unplanned on our part. Yeah, spontaneous order and action. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Yeah, I love it. So so uh, please go into the uh, the third one, um, The Creature from Jekyll Island and, and what that's sure. about. Yeah, so I, I mentioned briefly the first book based on the law by Bastiat, Proper Role of Government, What is Law, Justice, Plunder, and Everything. Uh, the second book, uh, very briefly, uh, is based on I Pencil by Leonard Reed, talking about spontaneous order and markets and, and uh, you know how is it that uh, objects are made and all of the people and processes and everything that's involved in that and uh, the, the, the invisible hand and so forth. Um, our third book, I really wanted to do one based on money. Um, I felt uh, growing up that I didn't really understand it. It took me a long time to grasp it. Uh, you know, I went through a gold phase myself and more recently a Bitcoin phase and, and just trying to understand a lot of this stuff that isn't taught in school and most parents don't teach it uh, either. And so I wanted to do a book because it's so pervasive. I mean, the, you know, every commercial transaction is underlined by some sort of exchange of, of goods or services. Um, and of course, we have the the uh, the abstraction now with money where you're not actually having to barter but you can you use money it's so central to our lives and yet kids don't understand it so uh, the book is uh, each book that we write is based either loosely or closely on an original work and so G Edward Griffin wrote a book years ago about the Federal Reserve called The Creature from Jekyll Island 
Uh, for those who are unaware, the Jekyll Island is the ritzy resort where some bankers and politicians uh, secretly fled to uh, in 1910 to concoct the idea that later, a few years later, became the Federal Reserve. So his book is this creature from Jekyll Island. And I thought the imagery of that was so interesting to do for a children's book, right? I mean, you can turn it into an actual creature, which we've done, and that becomes the, the bad man, the boogeyman or whatever. And, uh, and so we use that book loosely, of course. We talk in our book about the Federal Reserve, but um, – a little bit more generalized, central banking, right? Because we want the, these books are being translated into different languages. They're being sent all over the world. Uh, we don't want it to be tied necessarily to something that's American. So there's a little bit of the Federal Reserve, but it's more broadly speaking, central banking. What is money? What is inflation? Uh, why don't people barter anymore? What are the disadvantages to that? What are some of these new innovative gold products and, and digital currencies and things that people are getting into? And so we really wanted to expose children to uh, the, the background behind money, how it came to be and, and why um, you know governments are able to steal people's money. And so we introduced a, a grandparent, the, gra- the Tuttle twins' uh, grandparents. And and like many uh, senior citizens, right, they in the story are on a fixed income, they're retired, and the, their savings is being eroded by this creature. And so the twins turn into, you know, detectives in a way so that they can try and figure out, well, why is grandpa's money being stolen and what is this creature that's doing it? And it's a very relatable story and, and many people have grandparents in that exact predicament. Um, and so we've, we've actually had really good response on this one. It was fun doing a book that is a little bit darker, a little bit edgier. It's not just, oh, we're going on a field trip to learn about how pencils are made. You know, it's, a, it's like, well, who's this creature? And he's doing bad things. And how do, we, how do we respond to that? How do we get him to stop? And how do we stop the bad guy? <laughs> um, and so it was a, a fun to do a book that set up the, the nemesis and the victim. And, and we can kind of work through that so kids can kind of come away with a better understanding and have some excitement along the way. Um, and so we're, in our fourth book, we're going to be doing the same thing, kind of have a victim and a bad guy and, and try and uh, explore that same interaction because it worked really well in the third book and, and we've gotten a fantastic response, and, including from G. Edward Griffin, the, the author of the original oh, really? book. That's yeah, great. he's ordered like two boxfuls of these books, <laughs> and given away and sell, reselling them and everything else. And <laughs> That's beautiful. When I, when I first pitched him on the idea, uh, because the authors of all of our, our first two books are dead, and so, right. you know, t- out of respect, I, I, I wanted to get his, you know, approval or, or buy-in and he thought the idea was fantastic and so we kind of kept him in the loop all, you know all along the way and and uh yeah he's a big fan so it's been fun yeah you brought uh one thing to mind for me um which is you know you said the grandparent was the one that uh, you know ha- has the perspective to talk to kids about money right because he's seen the evolution of prices over mm-hmm. over their lifetime right and um you would think that you know living for such a long time and then seeing that evolution seeing the value of your currency go down and prices go up um that you would naturally distrust fiat currencies and and uh, and uh you know move more towards hard hard money right that has it has a better store of value over time but that's not necessarily the case like I, I there's a lot of elderly people that still stubbornly cling to this idea that i don't know maybe they think it's natural like that you know everybody has this idea you know we have to have two percent inflation every year you know? sure, <laughs> like, like right. it's a natural order of things you know yeah and, and they don't look at it as theft you know and and when you try to bring up to them like the federal reserve and you know, it's a it's a it's monopoly control over money. They can print at will, right? Trillions of dollars. <laughs> they look at you like you're crazy, <laughs> right? And that's that's I think our 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 challenge is because I think the the propaganda has been so effective in this to help people lead people to believe exactly what you say that oh that this fringe stuff and gold isn't for me and that's silly and there's all these problems with it um, I, I really think that's kind of by design I mean the, gov- the government has the ability to print money it's going to protect that very jealously it's going to guard that that authority well of course they don't want people in government schools being taught that its own power is a bad right. thing I mean you know you look at books on Federal Reserve and if they mention it at all it's with you know very passing reference of a single paragraph in the history <laughs> books right. and, and rarely even that you you know, and 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 uh, and so it's this mysterious thing, and people think it's part of the government, and it's just 
I think it's by design, and and that's unfortunate because we're we're up. Uh, the the deck is stacked against us for trying to combat that. And you would think, yeah, when it hits people in the pocketbook, wouldn't they reconsider? Would they kind of have open mind? But propaganda is hard to overcome. I mean, here in Utah, mm. we're trying to legalize medical marijuana right now, and and just everyone who went through the Dare program when they were like ten years old for decades, you know, <laughs> that propaganda is steep, and that's hard to get people to overcome their biases and re, you know reevaluate their opinions. I think the same thing applies here, and that's. I don't know. That it's a one by one effort. I don't know that we're going to win anyone in any big campaign uh, just because there are many other bigger campaigns that are funded by taxpayers that are going to combat that and cast it aside as fringe. Uh, but if you can sit down with someone and relate to them and talk to them, I think that that's a much better venue to kind of convey these ideas. Yeah, my entrance into um, volunteerism and uh, Austrian economics was that book G. Edward Griffin, um, mm-hmm. and I uh, I learned a great deal and I really in- enjoyed it. He 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 told it in such an engaging and riveting way uh, that it really stuck with me, and um, and and so since then I've really had a passion for talking to people about um, neutral things. Like for example, everybody has an, an, an opinion on immigration, right? People have an opinion on taxation, right? The rich should be still, you know, the rich should be tight. You know, they have an opinion on it. It's, it's an emotionally charged, um, sure. um, you know, item, but, but you know, who has an opinion on monetary, the monetary system, who, who has an opinion on fiscal policy? Nobody cares about that. It's a right. neutral thing. So if, that's why uh, for me, when I meet somebody, that's one of the best things I like to do. Like I, I take uh, and I take out a dollar bill. I think that's a great, lear- a wonderful learning tool. You know, you, you know, you just dissect the dollar bill because no, whoever reads <laughs> what's on a dollar bill, nobody, <laughs> nobody. Federal Reserve note. What right. does that mean? Right. What does that mean? Like, what is the Federal Reserve? That's a, that's a that's a conversation in itself. What is a note? Right. What you know, a contract IOU. Right. So, what is yeah. what is why, why does it have a serial number? Right. <laughs> what why uh, <laughs> you know all these questions you can you can you can you can ascertain and and then I like to tell them um, one thing that's a really shocker for most people is um, you know, I say how much money do you think it takes. Uh, for the um, for the treasury to print physically print one dollar bill and print transport and store roughly it's six cents right roughly the last time I read it maybe, maybe it's more I don't know but roughly it's six cents and so I'm like okay now how much do you think it is to print uh, you know ink and paper and transport a hundred dollar bill you know roughly seven cents why because it's more ink right for the extra zero. <laughs> 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 and then when when that hits home to them they're like oh my god that's it <laughs> there's no material difference between the two <laughs> right. that's in, that's interesting i carry around the uh the hundred trillion dollars zimbabwe note that's oh, the, the I teaching get, object I wanna, that i, I, I want to get my hands on those <laughs> yeah they're like 10 bucks on ebay you know they're oh, they're great, they're yeah. nowhere near the value that they were originally that's tended awesome. to be awesome. and uh, in fact in the third book as you know you you read the book you know yeah. we include the image there of right. the and so we use that as a teaching lesson in the book and and initially the twins are like oh my gosh dad you're rich you're a hundred trillion dollars and he's like wait, wait wait no 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 you missed the point let's go back to it and then he kind of re-explains that you know why why it's actually meaningless uh but i've used that a lot especially when i teach uh, homeschool classes to teenagers uh to use as an object lesson and say why is this you know why is this only worth ten dollars now and and only as a novelty it's not worth ten dollars right i mean it's just a piece of paper as you mentioned but uh just people find it so interesting because it was this failed economic experiment so that there's kind of a a souvenir value there um, but yeah, I, th- I think really that the object lesson is a great route to take this. And, and hopefully, I mean, my goal with the Teletwins really is that imagine in tw- I'm, I'm, your effort is like mine. We're trying to educate adults and really we're actually not. We're trying to de-educate adults, <laughs> right? We're trying to have to say, no, wait, what you learned is, you know, in school is wrong or what your parents told you is wrong. And that's hard. Like I was just saying a minute ago, you have to overcome that. And that's very difficult to do. Imagine if we can invest in the rising generation, right? Imagine if we had a future of freedom fighters who understood the principles of liberty from a young age, who you didn't have to wait for them to be propagandized and indoctrinated by statism for 20 years, and then try and convince them and, and persuade them to overcome that. What if you could have just this, 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 Mass of this critical mass of people. So that's kind of the goal of, of the Tuttle Twins. It's the long term investment in the liberty movement. Um, so that, I mean, imagine what, what seven year old right now who just got the Tuttle Twins for Christmas um, is going to become the Ron Paul of 2045. You know, like you don't know what the future is going to be. So that's what excites us the most is that it's kind of this unquantifiable, fun investment in the future. We'll see what comes of it. But I think the monetary stuff is key because, as I said, 
I mean, no one teaches this stuff, right? And, and if they teach anything, they teach like the wrong stuff. And so, and then we have to overcome it later in life. So that's kind of the goal is to try and provide them that foundation early on so they can understand these concepts. And then as they're challenged, as they hear contradictory things in the news later on, they can kind of check that against this foundation and say, well, wait a minute, that doesn't quite jive with what I've learned before. Let me now think through this. Whereas without that, they would have just been um, accepted it as fact, right? Without being able to have any contradictory information. Yeah, so, so before we go on your, your, your other book, your fourth book, I just want to say, um, you know, we're talking about the hyperinflation and the, uh, you know, all the, all the zeros and the bills. <laughs> if somebody says, like, um, the way out of our, you know, monetary crisis is to print money, then that should mean that Zimbabwe would be the richest country on the planet. Totally. Argent- Argentina, Colombia, Hungary in the 1950s, and Weimar Republic, Germany. Right. right. These would be the richest countries on the planet. <laughs> It's nonsensical. Or Germany, right? I mean, you got Germany, the traditional right. wheelbarrow going, exactly. to, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but I, I think people are so accustomed to their the status quo that, like, it's a, it's a revolutionary thing to kind of, you know, legalize competing currencies, right? I mean, that, that would cause a lot of instability and fluctuation as markets kind of reshift and realign. Um, and I think really it's a fear of people being hit in the pocketbooks. They, they want to maintain the status quo, even if it's like a leech that's slowly sucking your blood. Yeah, better that than to amputate an arm and have to you know deal with some colossal change in your life exactly. but then be healthy exactly. I, I think we're having to overcome human nature and that's a very difficult thing to do right or, or belief in authority something like that so uh, True. Yeah. so so uh, yeah um, explain your your fourth book uh, before you go sure so um, the the Tuttle twins is a series of books right so we've got three fourth one will be out in March. Uh, I'd love to do about eight to ten by the time we're done. I mean, my goal is to come up with about eight to ten, maybe even a dozen, uh, um, <laughs> and have like a box set, right? So like a grandma could could get her kids the Tuttle Twins box set or something like that. Um, the fourth book is one that's near and dear to my heart. Having so I, I my full time gig, I as you mentioned, I founded uh, a, a think tank, libertarian think tank in Utah called the Libertas Institute, and we've been very successful. We've gotten a whole bunch of laws changed. It's been a wild ride and a lot of fun. Um, and one of the things that we battled uh, quite a bit with is um, disruptive technologies and innovative companies facing economic uh, protectionism, mm. right? So you've got the taxis and then you've got Uber and Lyft or you've got the hotels and you've got Airbnb and VRBO or you've got Zenefits with insurance. All these different – the sharing economy and all this stuff that's finding itself um, – coming to a head, coming to, into conflict with government policy. And so this is something, of course, that has spanned time. Frederick Bastiat is, is yeah, infamously wrote the you know, petition, the candle, candle maker's petition um, that touches on this subject as well. And so this book will be loosely based on um, Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt, which is itself based on Bastiat's writings uh, that cover the same topic. So Hazlitt kind of did a deeper dive and a, a thorough analysis of what Bastiat was kind of satirically explaining. And, uh, and so we're going to incorporate the concepts from that book um, into ours. It's called The Tuttle Twins and the Food Truck Fiasco. And it's going to be a book that, as you mentioned at the, out, at the outset of, of this episode, um, it's going to cover business principles. It's going to cover uh, regulations and how they can harm the economy. It's going to cover competition and why that's a good thing. It's going to cover uh, heavily economic protectionism and, and how uh, interests who are uh, have friends in government are able to use those relationships to punish uh, you know, upstart competitors. Um, and it's also going to include a little bit of uh, political activism. The, the Tuttle Twins are kind of, gonna, uh, kind of going to get into the mix on trying to overturn some of these laws. And so in part of the book, we're going to show them kind of uh, becoming a little bit of an activist to try and fight these protectionist laws um, and introduce a, a couple of concepts so kids can kind of learn the, the government process and who is it that passes you know, these laws and what's the city council, stuff like that. But as with the, the three books, and I'd love you know, your feedback on, on this reading it with your five-year-old, um, we, these are not textbooks, right? It's not like, mm. okay, here is what a you know, division <laughs> of labor means or here is what economic protection – like they are softly thrown in there in the context of a fun story. The kids are kind of going along for the ride and it's an engaging story. And then we just kind of drop these nuggets along the way. We explain them and we kind of contextualize them and, and you know, a parent might – kind of say, oh, well, what that means is this and whatever. But through, so through dialogue, we can get into it a little bit more. Uh, but we try and make this as, as non, um, I don't know, 
we, we try to make it fun, basically. Right. And so the story is going to be a very fun one. Uh, there's a little bit of humor, a little bit of sarcasm and everything. But that's, that's <laughs> uh, the fourth book. The illustrator's working on it right now. And uh, we're hoping to have it out on uh, March 15th. So probably in about a month, we'll open it, uh, uh, it up for pre-orders um, and then be able to hit ship hopefully in, in March 15th, so a couple months from now. Yeah, I was talking to my friend uh, today about um, this episode. Actually, I'm going to talk to you, and and because he's the one with the food truck, and and he was telling me that um, you know a few of the um, the most common complaints that that um, people have against food trucks are uh, like they they say that they're stealing customers from um, you know the the brick and mortar business at the re- restaurants, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> and and you know a complaint like that is just so funny because it's like. <clears throat> It's like my friend who can who can make a taco and uh, and some soup and sell that for for twelve dollars. Is he really threatening, uh, you know, a Brazilian steakhouse <laughs> like people who want to go and dress up formally and sit down, you know, <laughs> the three course meal like with air conditioning or with heating in the winter time? You know, totally. <clears throat> is that really a threat? <laughs> well, and, and it's you it's know so funny. <laughs> it's like chances are a person who says that has an iPhone in their pocket. And is that person going to agree that they're stealing, you know, business or Apple stealing their business from a landline company? I mean, it's just ridiculous. We all appreciate innovation when it's personally beneficial and we all hate it when it threatens our way of life. You know, but that's the beauty of competition is we can realign markets and find efficiencies and and higher productivity. But then you get everyone complaining. That was the whole basis of of Bastiat's candle makers petition that, you know, that they weren't liking this competition from the sun, this free and abundant resource, and we need to shut it down. And so it's hypocritical of these people who, on the one hand, love innovation and they use it and incorporate it in their daily lives. But, oh, all of a sudden, wait a minute, this innovation, you know, is undermining my, you know, stream of income. And so we can't have that. And it's just, it's, it's hip, it's hip, uh, hypocrisy. It's, it's cognitive dissonance. And again, human nature, we're having to overcome that. And, and uh, that's a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. And it's, and, you know, I guess it's very attractive. And that, this is one of the things that's, um, that's kind of wicked about about government on any size, you know, federal, state, city, you know, or local, any any size, because it's it's like a mini, it's even local, it's a mini protectionist racket, right? And yeah. and, and it's it's an incentive for the businesses that are you know long standing and entrenched to want to appeal to 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 enact legislation and and regulations to protect yeah. their profits, right? Um, not, without so. without having to do so. You know, in the marketplace, by offering a better product or a better service at a cheaper price, mm-hmm. and it's one of the most underhanded ways of doing it. <laughs> oh yeah, there's companies. So I, my experience is here in Utah, where I live and work, and there are companies who consistently will just donate to the the uh, campaigns of every incumbent. It's just it's an insurance policy. That's right, all it is. Right. They yeah. not only do they want any bad laws passed against them, but they want access if they want to pass something that's good and right. and good for them often means bad for their competitors. So it's. It's it's predictable. It's human nature, and and it's it's sad. But hopefully, these educational efforts can kind of get out the word and help people understand that we need consistency. Like you can't just fight fight you know innovation on one hand and support it on another. Right. Uh, this is something that's that's yeah. overall beneficial. And even if it's harmful to you, it's a net positive because it's benefiting that many more people. And right. so you should fight it just because you know you don't like it. And another uh, complaint he he hears uh, from like uh, the local, or I think it's the legislators, um, where they say that. Um, because food trucks, you know, like because food trucks are moving and they're not like a stationary building, so they can't they can't have access to the um, or they, they can't grant access to um, the 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 inspectors that inspect buildings, <laughs> brick and mortar buildings. So basically, basically they they're annoyed that he's able to produce quality service and products at a lower price, <laughs> and yeah, and, and, jealous, rend- right? and 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 render c- certain government agents. Agency's obsolete and, and irrelevant. <laughs> That's what they're. I'd angry be about. jealous too, right? I'm having to be regulated. All you know, this guy isn't. That's natural. You know, it's. Uh. Yeah, that's frustrating, and that's not to say that a children's book is going to solve all that, but you know, we'll see how it can benefit the overall conversation. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really hoping that uh, you know that this series will take off, and uh, you know I'm doing my best to promote it. So uh, I appreciate yeah, that. Definitely keep you, you know, keep you keep keep me aware of. Uh, I mean, I get your emails, but I'll definitely be contacting you <laughs> when you release the following ones. To uh, I appreciate uh, that very much. Yeah, get we're e- we're eager to get the word out. We're going to be at all sorts of homeschool conventions in 2016. We're doing a lot of online marketing. Frankly, the best way that word gets out for us is people who read the book who then engage in their own marketing. Right? They share on a mommy blog or on a podcast or mm-hmm. things like that. Our, our 
readers are our, our best uh, evangelists. And so it's been it's been fun for me as an author to have a product that a lot of people are excited by and want to share, and it's in you know improving their lives and having great conversations with their kids who are now learning this stuff. Um, so yeah, very appreciative of having me on and, and eager to keep continuing the book. So everyone can uh, the website again uh, real quick is just tuttletwins.com. We've we've got a, a package deal if you're new to this where we've got a discount and free workbooks that you can get um, if you buy the three books together. So just eager to get the word out and, and thanks again. Yeah, awesome. Thanks a lot. So if anybody wants to donate to my show, please do so. Help me out. I really want to interview more fascinating people like uh, Connor Boyack here. And, uh, you know, monetary encouragement is always helpful. <laughs> uh, you can do, do so uh, through through Bitcoin or PayPal. Links are below, as well as through Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Peaceful Anarchism is the link. Please help us out. We, uh, we want to continue doing this. And with your support, it will be realized, right? Monetary support is always helpful to, uh, if you want to see more of things in the world, that's, that's, the, dem- that's the democracy I support is voting with your dollars, right? <laughs> that's the best democracy I support. <laughs> No coercion necessary. No coercion. Awesome. So, uh, Connor Boyack, thanks a lot for coming on. I really appreciate it. Uh, wonderful thanks conversation. Again. So, this is uh, Peace Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and the Seeds of Liberty.com and the Conscious Resistance.com. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. <laughs>